Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. If you have a chance, hit the subscribe button down below to make sure you get all the curriculums as we release them. Um, today we are covering a great curriculum that we've been using for a number of years now, which is the Math Mammoth curriculum. And we are specifically talking about the grade three. Um, as you can see here, they're in binders. I like to use the digital version of this curriculum, which is available at the Math Mammoth website for about 50 to 60 bucks. This is a great curriculum um, that you can do. It's a workbook based curriculum, typically about four workbooks, two main workbooks that you'll be doing, as well as the answer keys and supplemental tests. Now there are tests included in the workbooks, which are, I think, great. But if you feel like you might need a little bit more additional testing, those additional uh, curriculum uh, cumulative review tests and a additional uh, chapter test will come in that third workbook. I don't tend to use the answer keys as much right now. Um, I think I will probably in the next couple of years as the math gets more and more complex and it's not as easy for me to check. So do, do know that there are the answer sheets as well. I love this curriculum because it is just so well laid out and it includes so many good ex working examples. Um, I, I love my child having a lot of time on paper. Um, math, I very much feel like is a skill. It's almost like a muscle that needs to be trained. Um, and Math Mammoth has a wonderful does a wonderful job at that. One thing that I always like to supplement besides sticky notes to find out where you are quickly in the books um, is some legal pads. I tend to have to do a little bit extra explaining. Sometimes the um, example problems, um, I may need to make an extra couple problems or maybe work a couple extra problems with my daughter. Um, I always like to have a little bit of a legal pad uh, tucked away in here as well. Another thing that I had to do with this level of curriculum was to include a multiplication table because this is where we get into a lot of multiplication and division. So level three is addition and subtraction. We got some clocks, we got some clockwork, we got some money work. But where the, the time you're going to be spending here is a lot of multiplication. And at the end, we cover a lot of division and a lot of fractions right at the end. So it, it's all coming together now uh, in the grade three curriculum. So if you have a chance, hang on and we'll go ahead and, and take a look inside. So here we go. We've got two workbooks, the grade three A workbook and the grade three B workbook. Um, obviously, I print off these curriculums print the front pages, put them into the binder, and I use those. So here we have a nice little list of what is covered in this curriculum. We have an addition and subtraction. We, we, we expand on that. Uh, multiplication concepts, multiplication tables, clock money, place value up to the thousands, do a little bit of geometry, a little bit of measurement, but really where, where it lies is the synergy between learning your multiplication tables, being comfortable with multiplication, and then having that manifest in division and we touch on fractions at the end. So a lot is covered in a math in this math mammoth level, um, which has been building over the over the levels um, to this point. So let's go ahead and hop in. You can get a good look of what a, um, a, a work text looks like. So basically we are looking at obviously I have my fraction chart here. I think in my other book I have my multiplication table. This is just a simple little chart I printed off online drive to them the concept of the whole number with the, uh, the various fractions. Um, this was something, a nice little reference that I always like to keep as well as the multiplication tables. Just as a quick reference for my daughter, if she has a quick question or maybe she hasn't really committed all those that information to her memory, she can obviously reference these. At the beginning of every um, Math Mammoth curriculum, they, they do a nice layout of the chapters, what chapters are gonna be covered and what the various concepts will be covered as well. You can see there's many sections um, within each chapter. And the first book covers up to chapter five. There's in front of every single chapter, there's a nice forward. Um, this was the forward at the beginning of the book. The beginning of each chapter is a nice layout of all the concepts you're gonna be covering, as well as a further layout of what concepts are being taught and how many pages those concepts cover. Cool thing about Math Mammoth, especially very helpful in the digital version, is that all these live links. Um, if you have uh, additional questions or your learner needs a little bit more learning or wants to play a game, maybe an online game, Math Mammoth provides you a great job at, um, uh, provides a great opportunity for you to, to have further learning. If you want to, you know, have your, have your student go and, you know, drive home a certain concept, they provide those here for you. I really like this as a, as a service provided and it keeps going here as well to rounding and charts. Now, first chapter one, 
obviously we're doing some a little bit of a review from uh, um, grade two as we come into grade three. For us, we homeschool all year round, so we, we do not take very long breaks between our math curriculums, typically a week or two. Um, I typically use Math Mammoth as a review curriculum. You could use it as your sole curriculum. Um, when I complete a math curriculum, I will then use Math Mammoth to drive home that mastery um, because it allows my, my learner to have a little bit more free time. So what I tend to do is I assign her a couple pages and then I go and let her go do those. And she comes back, lets me check that work. Um, or if she has a question, she can come to me. One of the things that I like to do, um, especially at this level, is expecting my learner to begin to, to read the descriptions of the section of what is required. Math Mammoth does a great job at including a lot, a lot, a lot of word problems. And I'll show you a number of those as we move on. Obviously, just very simple uh, mental addition here, that, that concept that they're talking about, some more mental subtraction. Really getting the child's brain being able to do math quickly. Now, it's kind of funny because as adults, we, we don't do a lot of this. We'll just open up our phone, hit the calculator. So I found this to be very helpful for her to, to really understand what she's doing, understanding the relationship of numbers, understanding what the operators are looking for, and being able to move quickly. Um, when we start to get into upper grades of math, we're going to be leveraging a lot of these concepts, whether it's math or division or multiplication, um, we need to be able to do those fast, otherwise we get bogged down when we are asked to do more complex things. I love how this is driving home that mastery. Let's go ahead and take a look at, this first chapter was actually kind of funny because it was actually very long. Um, it's almost, I think 60, 70 pages long was the first chapter. So yeah, it felt like a lot of review right up at the end. We even covered PEMDAS here a little bit. Here we go, here's a good example of some word problems that were done. Um, I do not, yeah, here's another good one here as well. Um, my child had to learn to read these problems, understand what is, what is being asked for. I think that's one of the hard things when it comes to word problems is really understanding what is needed. Um, getting those skills and getting that repetition I think is great and Math Mammoth does a really good job of that here. Um, let's go ahead and hop into say, let's see what chapter is here, multiplication. So this is the big one obviously, starting to cover multiplication. They do it in a very progressive way where they're introducing, you know, multiplications of four, multiplications of 10. Um, filling out the chart. Now this, I felt um, there was a lot of this work and this would take a long time. And I, I, I could see my learner kind of getting tired of doing the repetitive work. Um, so a lot of times I would just have her, you know, do one section or a couple lines of the a multiplication table because I just felt like she was getting a little tired of it. Um, here I had her do the whole thing, um, but I think I found it found to be a lot of work for her. So as we move through the multiplication work, here it is again, I made her do the whole chart, but eventually I just had her do whatever the um, table that we're covering at that time. So here obviously we're doing by sixes and here I'm asking her, okay, just do the sixes and maybe sometimes I'll ask her to do maybe the half, half sixes, which are the threes. So if she can get you know, the sixes down and maybe the threes. And eventually you're just filling this chart out in, through memorization, but also understanding that we have a lot of tricks, whether it's the tens or the elevens, the nines, where we can do with our fingers. Ones are obviously straightforward. Filling out a lot of this chart just by intuition is really helpful so that we can focus on the memorization kind of in this quadrant, which is where the challenge uh, often lies. Multiplications by nine. We kind of skipped some sections here, just a couple sections. Um, you'll, you will notice in uh, at, within the chapters there are these things called puzzle corners. Um, depending on where you are in, the, in, in your lesson, I, I found I was doing about two to three pages a day with my daughter. A lot of times the puzzle corners kind of came at the end and I kind of just let her, you know, she just didn't have to do those. They can be very challenging. Um, so I, it just wasn't something that I wanted her to do every single time only periodically. So here you go again, we have uh, the sixes and sevens I asked her to do. Uh, here fours and eights, so four, but then half eights are fours. And so if you can memorize those, you can see nice relationships between the two. Again, 11s and 12s we did here. Came back into telling time, but my, my daughter kind of has a good understanding of time now. So I just had her kind of breeze through this section. Money was actually fairly straightforward. Again, my, my child's finally gotten a good handle on money. 
Um, so these sections were actually fairly quick. And I'll go ahead and hop into uh, book two, where we talk a little bit more about place value and geometry. So obviously these are place values up to a thousand. So now we're starting to think about thousands. One of the things that I like to do, especially in this section of the book, was I was asking her to read these numbers. Um, there's a, there's a, <laughs> a really great skill that has to be developed, which is, can you read numbers quickly without you know, having to guess, okay, how many places are they? Oh, that's a thousand. Now it's 2000. Oh, that's 500. You know, being able to look at that and say, oh, that's 2,500 or 2,500 and being able to, to read these numbers quickly. This was a, a skill that I was asking her to do a lot of. Um, moving beyond, let me just show you a little bit of the, of the division work that came up. So chapter nine came into the division. And then we'll go ahead and show you one of the, uh, the tests here at the end. One of the cool things about the division work is that there's a lot of word problems. The division almost was like a, a heavy word problem uh, option. Almost in every single page we had, we had this kind of groupings. Now, one of the things that I was always driving home, which was division and multiplication are just kind of the, the inverses of themselves. Very similar to how uh, addition and subtraction can also be inverses of themselves. Division is the same. So instead of worrying about like, well, what was 16 divided by four? Sometimes I'm thinking, well, what is what times four gives you 16? Oh, okay. So she can think in both directions. It was very helpful. And it was also a way for me to drive home the mastery of the multiplication tables. Really good, really cool skills. Um, even got it a little bit into long division right at the end, covering remainder. So we even get into the, the where, where most division problems <laughs> have remainders. Um, they don't have nice round numbers. So they started covering that there at the end. And then here we have, oh, basically a mixed review uh, at the end of the chapter. So that's a good example. I'll go ahead and, and find here a, a nice test for you. So I have a good one here on uh, chapter six. Uh, very often we will have a kind of a mixed review at the end of the, of the chapter, which kind of touches on a little bit of the topics from, the, from that chapter um, and a little bit of skills that came from before. There was some Roman numerals that was covered and I did not um, have my daughter worry too much about that. Whenever I hit Roman numerals, I kind of just exit out and we skipped those sections. Didn't really feel that that was a skill she absolutely needed to know. So that was something I was just gonna pass on. Once you finish the mixed review, you have the final review of chapter six. And what's cool is, is these reviews are typically about two pages long and I use these as my tests. So like what I end up doing is say on day A, on the first day, say it's a Wednesday, I will, I will do the mixed review work with her as kind of like a, you know, as a normal effort that we do or I'm working through the problems and helping her and we're discussing the problems. The following day, say it's, that was a Wednesday, this is now a Thursday, I would actually have her do this as an exam where I would actually give her the ta these two pages and say, okay, you have to, you know, uh, run through these problems. You have to read the descriptions. If there is a question, you can ask me, but I'm not going to help you do the answers. At the end, I'll, I'll grade them. And if you get, you know, something wrong, I'll, I will um, allow you to fix that. Another thing you can do as well when you buy the online curriculum is use the additional supplemental test. I did not use the supplemental test for this run of the curriculum. Uh, we had a lot of breakups of, of uh, we were on travel and we had some activities that we had to do. I was really just using this as a mastery. I was really focusing mainly on getting her to the multiplication and the division sections because I thought those were the skills she needed to work the most on. So I didn't really do these additional tests or the cumulative tests here. Um, I have done those in the past um, and those can help you if you need some additional testing or if you have an assessment requirement for your homeschool. Those final tests are really nice to have um, so that you can then do that, that whatever reporting you may need. Um, but here we finish the review. She goes ahead and finishes these problems. Uh, give you a nice grid there to do some of your math. That is basically how I do an exam. If she did a good job, we go ahead and move right on. Obviously the next chapter here is uh, geometry, but it's fairly straightforward. Hopping forward into the uh, fractions area. Obviously we have a little bit of fraction. Ah, there's that pencil I was looking for. Um, and also here you see also my, my multiplication table, which um, I tuck into uh, the, the page here. So I, I use this very extensively. During this grade, I would often give her the multiplication table for her to use, especially on the day-to-day -day, um, activities. But sometimes I would 
take it away and ask her to use her skills and, and use the tools that she has in her tool belt um, in order to solve these problems. Um, so the use of the multiplication printout table is to your discretion. There's no, um, I think, right or wrong way, um, but I do like having that available in case she needs it. Uh, here's a little bit of a fraction work. It was pretty straightforward. Um, it was pretty straightforward work here um, with respect to fractions. I think we are getting geared up for decimals and then the obviously the long division was kind of teased. I'm excited to see what is in grade four. I hope that walkthrough of the Math Mammoth grade three curriculum helped you um, understanding what is in the curriculum, seeing what those uh, problems look like. Obviously you can see as we were moving through those pages in both workbooks, both work texts, there is just an incredible amount of problems. And what I like about Math Mammoth is that those problems are new. Almost every single page has a, a different problem. There's not a lot of repeating. Obviously there are some things of you know, multiplication and you're doing a lot of problems, but I thought that the um, word problems were incredibly creative. Um, they very rarely repeated themselves. It was great creativity. I'm playing a little bit with the language um, so the, the learner has to think about you know, what are they actually asking for. It was super helpful, super good. I am really, I really love this curriculum, especially the digital option. It just allows you to print it off, especially if you have larger families. I found that I was doing about two to three pages a day, about a half hour to do those two to three pages. Um, some days are a little bit longer if your learners having a little bit more of a rougher day. Sometimes they were shorter if it was an easier section. I didn't go more than that um, unless it was a fairly easy skill that my daughter knew, knew, uh, was pretty comfortable with and maybe we do four pages, but two to four pages, two to three pages I think is a good limit. If it's the first time you're going through the curriculum, don't be afraid that you may only get a page done every day. The two workbooks I think took us about three or four months to do. Um, so you can imagine that was our second time through this, these concepts. So for your learner, you may go a little bit slower and that's absolutely fine. Um, I love the price point, about 50, 60 bucks for the entire section. If you get the digital curriculum and you have multiple children, especially if it's your first child and you got a, you got one in the wings coming up, like I do, um, it's great to have the digital versions that you can print off um, and amortize that, that cost across multiple children. That's a really nice thing. I didn't use as much abacus work in this, uh, this one and we did not have as much manipulative needs. It was mainly the legal pad and a pencil really doing a lot of that extra heavy lifting. And those obviously those print off sheets of the multiplication table and the fraction chart, I found those to be very helpful. Just always have in, in the binder in case my child needs a quick reference. I'm thinking about putting together another kind of like maybe just general reference of like addition and subtraction problems that maybe she can reference um, in case she gets stuck. Very often our learners might get a little stuck and they wanna get a nice little uh, uh, kind of a reference sheet. I'm thinking about putting something together like that, but for two one inch binders allows you to travel go to the go to your co-op uh, go do a little bit of math while uh, brother or sister is at a sport i love to take these on the road i love these as a mastery if it's your only math curriculum you cannot go wrong with math mammoth